I'd like you to try something with me, if you would. Raise your hand, with your fingers extended like this. Don't make a fist, but I want you to think about making a fist. Imagine what it would be like in your mind to make a fist. Actually try to feel your hand closing, your fingers real tight against your palms. You know, with your mind's eye, do it, but don't actually do it in the flesh. Now, after you've done that, I'd like you to do the opposite. Take your hand and actually make a fist. Now, ask yourself, what's the difference between the two? We can use our brains to think about making a fist and not actually do it, but we can actually go about making a fist while barely thinking about it at all. In fact, we can do several things at once while making a fist and not be uh, thinking about it a whole lot, really. But just thinking about something doesn't make it happen. When we actually make our bodies move and do things, it's not our thinking power we exercise, it's our willpower. Without the human will, the brain is just short of useless. Conversely, there are movements our bodies make that don't seem to use either the human will or any kind of thought process. You don't think about or will your heart to beat or your lungs to expand and contract. They just do it. However, we can will ourselves to quit breathing and actually hold our breath. Uh, practitioners of Buddhism and other esoteric philosophies can even use their will to slow down their heartbeat, or so it's said. When we lay down to sleep at night, we don't will ourselves to dream the dreams we have. They come to us unexpectedly without forethought. But if we're caught in a nightmare, you know, we can usually will ourselves to wake up. So what is this thing called the will? I don't think anybody really has an answer for it. It operates through the brain. In other words, it uses the brain to make our bodies do things in the material world. But it doesn't seem to be subject to this world. It seems to have a lot in common with the old world concept of a spirit. Something within that gives animation and life to organisms. Are the will and the spirit just two names for the same power? Sort of. But the well runs a little deeper yet. The Apostle Paul wrote about how sometimes the mind was willing but the body was weak. C.S. Lewis said in The Weight of Glory that he believed the human conscious to be composed of both the Tao, something akin to moral instincts, and the choices the mind makes between right and wrong where the Tao is unclear. I think Lewis is right. Paul separates the mind from the conscious in Titus 1.15 where he says, both their minds and their consciences are corrupted. The conscious for Paul seemed to hold a certain reverence. It was God himself, a glimmer of divine light within mankind. It was the first precept of all reason because it was reason without cause. And yet Paul also talked of the conscious in other places where he admits that it's at least partially developed by our choices. So I tend to think he thought of the conscious as something like a big dam where Satan was on the other side and where the biggest part of the structure was made by God, but where we have the ability to add to it and strengthen it or to tear it away until it comes tumbling down altogether. And the man who has torn down that dam is the kind of man who can do unspeakable acts. The dam that would have kept the evil out of him is gone, and he's floating in the sea of filth that he let in. Now this is a hard subject to grasp, and I believe that's why Paul thought of it as, as a mystery. But the body seems to have a mind of its own. It not only has physical desires, but mental desires that are not healthy. We all have thoughts that flood our heads now and then that we wish were, weren't there. Yet we find that getting rid of them is not so easy as just wishing them to be gone. Yet we do wish them to be gone. How can it be that the minds of our bodies wish one thing and yet we possess something behind that mind that wishes something else? Unless that something is a real entity of some kind. It's as if we have both a physical will and a spiritual will and they're often at odds with each other. And the closer we grow to Christ, the more at odds they're going to become. But here a third oddity comes into the fray that's even more difficult to take in. We may wish to be good, you know, to follow our God-given consciousness. Sometimes this involves hard work. I may know through my conscience that God is telling me to do a certain good deed, uh, maybe to cut my neighbor's grass because they're sick. But what if I don't like cutting grass? You know, uh, not only does my physical mind lack a desire to do a certain good work sometimes, but even my spiritual mind seems to have no will to do this. That is, I wish that I would desire to do certain things that I really have no desire to do, uh, that they would become a part of my spiritual will. They may never be part of my physical will because it's always at odds with my spiritual will. 
I don't want to cut my neighbor's grass, but I really wish I could make myself want to. And if we wish to desire to do good in things, often that wish is fulfilled at some point. That wish can only be fulfilled by another kind of will, one that's foreign to my own. Only God can convert your desire to desire something into a, a part of your own will. The Bible says to love your enemies, but I think probably no one in the history of man ever wanted to love his enemies. You can't make yourself want to. But as long as you at least desire to want to, then God can step in and convert that desire to a want to, for lack of a better term. Before long, you find that you really do want to love your enemies or cut your neighbor's grass and so forth. It came by no power of your own, and it usually came long after you gave up on it ever coming. One day you suddenly realize that you have a kind of love for people that you never had before. And this is what Paul meant by transforming your mind. It also happens to be what salvation is, for lack of a better term. It's not the things that we do or the words that we say, you know, some believing in some magic name, or the opinions we hold about God or the Bible or the church. It's the desire to desire goodness in all things. I know of no word for that desire behind desire, but the thing surely exists. And it's the most important thing a man has to take heed of within all of creation. Now there's one last part to this puzzle about desires and willpower, and that is the subject of free will. Probably the most astoundingly bad arguments I've ever heard come from atheists have to do with what's called a lack of free will. According to determinism, from the moment of the Big Bang, and we know that with certainty there was a Big Bang, a moment of rapid expansion at the beginning of the universe, both the Boomerang Project and the Wilkerson Probe have proven this beyond all doubt. Everything in the universe, according to determinism, is simply a result of of collisions of particles since the Big Bang happened, and those collisions are still happening. Therefore, the very thoughts I have are just random thoughts that come about by the random collisions of particles going through my brain, that make up my brain. They don't stop to think about how absurd this is. If man didn't have free will, we should expect to see him going around walking into walls like a wind-up toy. I don't know about you, but I haven't been walking into walls too much lately. The very fact that I pull up to a red light and stop, and that everybody behind me thinks to stop as well, and does, unless they're drunk or something, shows that we have free will. The fact that people all over the world set the minute hands of their clocks to approximately the same time ought to be enough to prove to anyone that man has free will. But the atheist is right about one thing. If the world is nothing but a result of random collisions of particles, then there is no way free will should exist. But it obviously does. So either there are no random collisions of particles and there was no Big Bang, or there is a part of us that's made of something beyond this material world. Sleep on that one.